Hello and welcome to the first of the Agents Together Winning Ways webinars. Thank you so much for everybody joining us. As you can see, we are also joined by the wonderful Joe Hemmings, whom I will introduce in just a moment. Um, and basically, you know, many of you are aware of what we're doing at Agents Together now, and that is really helping and supporting the estate agency industry. And we're doing that by promoting a healthy mind and a healthy business. And we're doing that in a number of different ways. One of the main ways is through our mentorship scheme, which has been unbelievably popular so far. We've already had a few of our speedy mentorships take place and the feedback has just been phenomenal. And I'm looking forward to sharing that over the coming weeks and months with everybody. Um, but one of the other primary ways is these webinars. We are very keen to, I know everybody's been on webinar fatigue a little bit now, but we're very keen to bring in professionals and experts like Joe from outside of the industry who can really help us to deal with things slightly differently. There are many, many webinars out there for improving your listings or helping with sales progression and all the estate agency things. But we're really focused here on how, what we can do personally with our minds to actually help us, and, and this is the title of today's webinar, You know, what can we do to overcome some of the psychological impacts of COVID-19? And as I mentioned, we're so privileged to have Jo on. She's a phenomenal lady. She has, her background is, I mean, I haven't got long enough, it would take up the whole webinar, but ultimately published author, uh, often um, as a consultant on the television, on the, lots of the different news channels, talking about behavioral psychology, fully qualified behavioral psychologist. But also when I was researching and, and getting to understand a bit about Jo, one of the things that really struck me was about duty of care. Jo is a duty of care consultant and she actually gets the opportunity and, and, and goes out and finds out how businesses and TV channels and TV programs can have more of a duty of care. And I think right now that is so pertinent to what we're all going through because we all have a duty of care, whether we're a, a negotiator or a business owner to our colleagues and those around us to actually help support them and help them get through what has been, it's unprecedented. It's been used many times, but, but it's unprecedented what we've all just been through and we're all coping in different ways. So um, hopefully that, that sets us up. Thank you again for joining us. And hello, Joe. great, great to have you here. Thank you so much for, for coming on and talking oh, to all the people. Thank you. That was a lovely introduction. Now, um, it was really kind to say all those things. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to this and working with agents together. So just one thing I want to say is I'm going to pack a lot of information into this next 20 minutes, half an hour or so. Um, so some of it is on a very wobbly uh, auto cue on my iPad. So if I occasionally take my eye off the camera, I'm not taking my eye off the ball. I just want to make sure I get everything in there uh, that I can because I could do this all day long and I'm aware I've only got a limited amount of time and I want to try and get over the key points to you. So when my finger goes pointing out like that, that's because I'm playing with my um, iPad. Um, so yeah, forgive me for that. So one of the things that I sort of want to uh, start off by saying is that these are, look, you know, these last few months have been awful i mean they've been tough for everybody personally professionally um and the estate agency industry particularly which has always been subject to unpredictable peaks and troughs uh, at the behest of the economy at the best of times probably has been one of the most affected industries of all so we've had things like the social distancing measures imposed by the government um, that means that people are more isolated than ever before. I know we've just literally almost heard that two meters is now one meter, but we've lived for 12 weeks with, with uh, the two meter distance. We've turned our homes uh, into offices, into gyms, into playgrounds, into schools. The huge amount of uncertainty and change, you know, possibly in our relationships, financial worries, health threats, potential job threats, or losses rather. I mean, all that, you know, it's not surprising that uh, so many of us are experiencing high levels of uncertainty, worry and stress. And particularly for those, you know, I've got to make some note of people who already have pre-existing mental health conditions, 
depression, anxiety, things like obsessive com compulsive disorder, OCD, you know, you'll find that these things are being exacerbated by the current conditions. One of the things that's happening is we're all suffering from an excess of cortisol. So that's our hormone that regulates stress and an excess of adrenaline, which is our fight or flight hormone that you might have heard of. So we're constantly in this state of heightened alert and anxiety. Um, and there isn't much we can do about that. But in the employment context, uh, where most of us are used to sending emails to communicate across multiple time zones, you know, we've suddenly had to adapt to video conferencing uh, or similar technologies, you know, like this, instead of face-to-face -face contact. And the use of these has been brilliant because it's allowed us to maintain output and engagement. Um, some of you with the remote working, you know, you might have resulted in longer working hours than normal. It might have blurred the boundaries between professional and personal lives. You know, if your schools have been closed, working parents, you know, are struggling, those of you out there to balance work and, and family and teaching your kids. Um, you know, even junior employees, you know, missing that guidance and teamwork that you get from face to face conditions. And it's very difficult to replicate those in the virtual world. So it's, it's been tough. I absolutely agree with you there, Joe. I think we are in a, a, a we've just all, it's, there's no one that this hasn't affected, I don't think. And specifically that lack, of, as you've just talked about, of, of everything feels magnified and we haven't got anybody to be around. Um, so can you, can you tell us how, if we are feeling some of those stresses that you've just mentioned, how we can probably um, feel a bit calmer and a bit more settled during these times? So one of the key things is, is to stay connected. And I mean, connected with real people in real time where you can. I mean, you, you may have been furloughed during lockdown. Some of you will be able to complain, uh, to claim self-employed support. Some of you will have been working, but most of us will have found it tough going financially. Um, and the thing that everybody has learned, we've all got in common, is that we've learned new ways to communicate and connect, you know, often engaging on multi channels to meet the needs of your clients and your work. So, some of the connections that we are having at the moment are email updates, video messages from your CEO, WhatsApp groups, private Facebook groups, Zoom, Skype calls. And we'll be using those professionally. We're also using a lot of those uh, on a personal, social level as well. Now, that was great. There was this huge honeymoon period where the novelty value of this was very exciting. You know, I can do all my job from home and, and we're all connecting over the airwaves. Um, but there gets a point when that honeymoon period is over where it can feel quite difficult to actually feel properly connected in isolation. It doesn't matter how sophisticated the technology is. And, and I think a lot of us aren't as enthusiastic about those video calls as we were originally. So it's not the be all and end all it's important that we still do it for a while but try and make it part of a wider routine so that you're maintaining your exercise healthy eating habits keeping up non-screen activities like cooking gardening whatever it is that you like to do you know listening to music do it away from a screen you know you'll be more productive you'll be more motivated for not being dictated to if you like by a screen 24 7. I mean, you know, there have been a number of industries that have been impacted in a pretty devastating way by this pandemic. Uh, they've got little or no control over the situation. Travel industry is, is one of those examples. And while, uh, <coughs> excuse me, the property business will definitely be unpredictable for a while, there is a lot you can do to stay informed and connected. And actually, it's probably easier for you. Uh, I mean, you say don't you see business to do that than it is in the travel industry, for example, where, you know, it, the uncertainty dictates, you know, no flying or no hoteliers taking guests or whatever it is. So selling and buying homes is still going on. The government were actually very early with their proposed virtual viewings. That was one of the first things they did. So they clearly value it uh, as an industry, which has a great contribution to make to our economy. So staying connected with the latest information uh, in order you're, 
do your job as effectively and efficiently as possible um, is really key right now. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, I think you're absolutely right. You make a great point. It's something that I found was I was doing lots of Zoom and various other things during the day, and then it was time for a Zoom quiz. As, as, you know, and, and you're right, that non-screen time, I think, but still trying to stay connected. I know that some of my friends and I now are talking on the phone instead of Zooming. It felt like you had to Zoom everything at some point, but now... now people use the expression, I'm all Zoomed out. Now, that's okay on a personal level or social level if you just say, okay, I've had enough. But of course, when we're working, that's yeah. not really a phrase you want to be saying to your boss, uh, I'm all Zoomed out. So in a way, if you can do as much of your personal stuff at least you know phone calls or whatever rather than zooming it you might have a little bit more motivation for the zooms when you need them for work <laughs> great advice great advice so obviously we have seen a, a massive change uh, especially in the estate in agency industry of, of our working environments you touched just then on virtual viewings virtual valuations which is something that is alien to most estate agents, uh, not now, but it, it certainly was. And also many people get into estate agency because it's a people business. They love people, they love helping people, they love meeting people. I, you know, when I was an estate agent, I loved nothing more than a full di diary of viewings going out and helping people find their dream home. And, and that's really changed now. So how can, how can people best sort of adapt to these new working environments, would you say, Joe? I, look, the thing to do is to stay as flexible as you can. I mean, that, that's the way to adapt. I mean, some people, some of you listening to this will have been really happy being furloughed. Um, you know, it was a very comfortable place to be. Others of you are going to be absolutely itching to get back to work. Seeing you're saying, Sarah, you know, it's a people industry and it's kind of missing people. And, and while those that have adapted really quickly you know in technological and psychological terms to working at home have been really lucky it's actually going to be perhaps more difficult to return to an office environment than than people thought you know you haven't had it's you think you want to get get back to it but you haven't had the commute you haven't had to drive in the rush hour um you have to go out and get your lunch i mean all those things plus the fact that the virus you know, it's possibly still out there at some point or another, makes people fearful um, of returning to work. The properties that you visit, the office that you might be in, you know, there's going to be some concern that they might not be COVID safe. So I think it's, you know, we've got to get the economy back on track. We, we've got it, and you have a big role to play in it. But it's important that you address your concerns and your anxieties. Don't, don't bottle them up. I mean, if you feel that working full time in an office environment feels too much for you at this point, and many of us will feel they want to take baby steps back to that, then I think speak to your HR department, speak to your line manager, don't hold those anxieties in, it's okay to have them. Maybe you can split your time working from home sometimes, uh, be open to suggestions that they've got, but, but we're back to the thing about flexibility. It's a question of working out you know, what suits your current frame of mind, what suits your, you personally, and also, of course, what benefits your place of work. And sometimes that's a, you know, it's a balancing act. This is another really important point, Joe, And I think um, really as well for, for business owners, um, I think, you know, they're, they're, I would encourage them to have that empathy as well as I'm sure you would and, and also have a flexible outlook. You know, we have needs as business owners with those have to be fulfilled, but ultimately the more flexible we can be with our team, then the better really is kind of what you're saying there, isn't it? So yeah. how can we, how, our, our emotional well-being? what advice or tips have you got on how we can really help with our emotional well-being? I mean, it's an interesting phrase, isn't it? Emotional well-being. And it's not one that we ever perhaps paid enough attention to before we were forced to, to question it. I mean, the first thing I've got to say is stay mindful. I'm like, what does that mean? We've all heard of mindfulness. Uh, some of us don't know what it is. I mean, really, it just means living in the present, um, in the moment, and not dwelling in the past or being concerned too much about the future, which is easier said than done um so it's quite a nebulous term it can mean anything from yeah you know full-on yogic type 
meditation at one end to sitting on the sofa grabbing 10 minutes like with your eyes closed having a power nap or with a favorite magazine um but it's about staying mindful and positive in a really uncertain period so practical tips of mine would be embrace inbox infinity okay so studies have shown that the average person sends and receives over 100 emails a day checks their inbox 77 times a day and spends 3.2 hours of their working day on emails which becomes overwhelming particularly when those cortisol levels we referred to earlier those stress levels are already set to quite high volume so give yourself a break try checking emails at set times rather than constantly a big tip from me and i do all the time now missing some things but hey ho is turn off the sounds of your incoming email <laughs> particularly while you're working on something else or taking a break because that all disturbs the equilibrium of our minds um and honestly think twice before you reply to reply all email we don't all need to see the response to every single email that comes out particularly as an fyi you know something other people will welcome too because it just declutters you know and lets you be more productive um onto what really matters so we're all suffering as i said from this excess of adrenaline which is a fight or flight response cortisol uh that hormone that raises our stress level now normally under normal remember those uh circumstances we can self-regulate that but because we're in such a period of extreme uncertainty we're actually and we do automatically this self-regulation but it's quite difficult to exercise that now it's the system has been interrupted and it accounts for some of us for the edginess that we feel the lack of concentration it's really hard to focus hard to make decisions sometimes um i've got a bit clumsy um uh, so i never really was uh, some people can't even watch like a whole TV movie without fidgeting and getting restless, let alone a box set, which people say, oh, watch a box set. It's quite hard to concentrate on that when you've got these raised adrenaline and cortisol levels. So again, another practical tip, really easy, simple way to be mindful, uh, anchor yourself in the present is the four, seven, eight breathing technique. That is as straightforward as it sounds. Breathe in for four seconds hold it in for seven seconds breathe out for eight seconds so repeat that a few times and you get this lovely flow with your diaphragm expands i'm sitting up now as i say this because i realize i'm slumping <laughs> um so you let the deep breaths in and out you know so it sort of grounds you now you can integrate it into your life four seven eight breathing method uh by putting a timer on your phone three times a day morning lunch time and evening say you do it for two minutes each you need to repeat the cycles a bit so that's a really good start. Um, another way to relax our unsettled selves when in uncertain times is take a bit of a trip down memory lane. So you're probably aware of how sights and sounds and smells can suddenly trigger memories. Out of nowhere, there they come. They're not always good, they're sometimes bad, but it has the ability to, to ping something in our minds. And so, although that's very often coincidental you can deliberately choose to experience that that feel good feeling by reminiscing so that's maybe watching a favorite film doesn't matter if you know the script off by heart or the beginning the middle and the end that's okay looking at old photographs family photos photos of friends um in happier times i mean it makes us that sort of nostalgia can make us feel much more socially connected with each other it also fends off those feelings of isolation and loneliness that a lot of us get, we're connected, we're only virtually, um, and we need that sense of belonging. So it makes us feel more socially valued, more professionally valued, more confident, and, and more optimistic about our future, even in really uncertain times, because it reinforces self-continuity. It reinforces the fact that your past is interwoven with your present, which is interwoven with your future. We're just in one, little zone of that at the moment and and knowing that that sort of sense of self-identity are all important ingredients in our well-being right now it's getting that sense of perspective that we're moving through a phase not a very nice phase but we're coming back out and and life will return to something that resembles the way we were even if not an exact mirror image of it 
I think, you know, I mean, it's such an important point. I think, you know, that, that breathing methodology that you've just talked about, I had no idea it was an actual technique, but I found myself doing it sometimes, you know, when, when things, uh, you know, get on top a little bit. And, and I think the important message that I've just really taken from what you've said there, Joe, is it, it, we're all feeling this. It's not, you know, I, I'm probably speaking to every single hundreds of people that will, will end up watching this video and, and we're all feeling something. Others are finding it harder than, than, than you know, maybe I am or, or, or maybe I'm finding it harder than somebody else. You know, it's all kind of almost, it's not, there is almost purposeless to relate it and say, right. am I worse, am I better than someone else? I mean, I have to talk about it a lot. I talk about it all day long, most days. Yeah on the radio, on TV, in, in journalistic form. And just occasionally I get that overwhelming. I just literally go away and sob. Something triggers it, just one individual human story. Not, not the facts and figures we're getting, not the briefing, yeah. this number went up, this number went down, whatever. It's actually the, it's the individual human stories that suddenly just come out of nowhere. And, and, and I get upset, but I also know that's all right. I mean, that whole phrase, it's okay to not be okay, it might be a bit of a cliche, but it's a cliche for a good reason, because I doubt there is anyone who isn't going through this. Mm. Uh, they may not be admitting to it. They might feel that it shows some sort of sign of weakness. Yeah. Um, but, and whether it affects them for an hour here and there, or whether it affects them for a few days or a cluster of time, it's impossible that as human beings, physiologically and psychologically, we're not going to have an adverse, anxious reaction to to what's going on. So yeah, that's a really really great point. I think you know, I I think you know, my message really was to make sure that everybody knew that exactly like you said, you know, it, it is okay to not be okay, whatever that looks like. Um, so on on that basis, um, what would you say then are the best ways for us to deal with um with, with the world as it evolves and how how do we sort of stop ourselves feeling um you know absolutely um overwhelmed i, I mean because undoubtedly you know whether it is that one hour or whether it's a persistent overwhelmed it's happening we're all experiencing it so how do, how do we try to solve that or overcome that i don't want to go into sort of like psychology jargon i and i'm not going to do it but it is about Again, this simplest form, it's about staying yourself. It's about having that sort of sense of self-identity, self-awareness. Um, uh, so, you know, the world is changing. It seems to be evolving quickly. It's wholly unpredictable. We've got a lot of very unusual demands that are made on all of us. You know, homeschooling, not being able to see or hug our families. I mean, who doesn't miss touch? Um, so all the things we took for granted, Basically, we don't have those at the moment. So, but it's important to recognise that adapting to this is is both temporary and necessary. Um, and while we can try, and it's healthy to control those aspects of our lives um, where we do have some control over it and how we behave, it's also not healthy to worry about what we have no control over. I think a lot of people at the moment are feeling they're getting mixed messages. Uh, either from the government or from news or you, you can fit a story around whatever you're worried about and you'll you'll find some information on it um but you've got to kind of keep your own perspective and balance really so one of the things i would say is you know get your news information from a reliable source so the main tv and radio channels or newspapers set yourself a worry window i call it um so that you only do something like watch um i don't know it me i watch breakfast tv in the morning kind of watch the briefing still um sometimes i watch peston on itv sorry i'm not doing an advert for him but I kind of he's late at night i'm kind of rats and he's quite a chill guy so i feel all right what i don't want people to do is to keep rolling news on all the time so that temptation to keep on social media you've got a window open for work and you've got a window open for social media and you're looking at it all the time it's rolling there you've only got one eye on it or listening to the radio it's fine lovely listen to soothing music listen to heavy metal if that's your thing um listen to your own music 
but try not to listen to all day long those talk radio stations um because even if you're not aware that you're absorbing the tension if you like of what's going on you are it's disturbing the equilibrium of our minds it's going in there and it's edging up that cortisol and those adrenaline levels even when you're not aware that it's happening so just perhaps keep yourself informed that's very important but maybe only do it twice a day i, I really identify with that joe and i'm really pleased you know, about it's, it. it's lockdown relief i forgot about lockdown relief so some people are really loving this i yeah. to say people particularly are driven by internal pressure keeping up appearances, having to be seen to be productive, showing up to everything, achieving lots, being visible, being there for everyone. I mean, there's a lot of those aspects that people have just done by second nature. It's what we do. Now we're kind of chilling out. We're in a, actually it's quite nice. It's a feeling of relief and not having to perform as often as we were or as much as we were before. Um, even the point of not dressing up, perhaps you're not having to wear a suit or get smart anymore, you can still do your work. You know, that actually kind of makes you almost more authentic in a way. So you're not presenting yourself. I know it's you and it's still your authentic you, but it's you dressed up and now it's you in the same way, but in a more sort of chilled environment. So we're becoming more self-aware. People are becoming more self-aware during this period, the last three months don't always like what we find to be fair <laughs> um but there are always things we can find we like so we'll find good qualities we'll find good personality traits we'll fucking find talents you know i've known people who've taken up art as a relaxation and actually found they're very good at it i tried that i was still very bad at it but um you know writing just something that you as a hobby that you might not have done before it's a good opportunity to find that out and it's great relaxation it's a great distraction so finding that part of your authentic self to use in a dynamic way moving forward is actually you know we've got to look at the positive takeaways from this and that's one of them you, you're probably not the same person you were three months ago but you know you've gone through something quite radical and you're still here and you're still working at it and yeah you know it, it's not that what doesn't kill us makes us stronger which is not a phrase i particularly like but it is that you do get some substance from this as a, as a character it's character building in that sense you know yeah. possibly the worst situation many of us will ever face and hopefully will ever have to face again um and it's, I'm back to that. It's okay not to feel okay during that. Yeah. That's brilliant, Joe. And, and the, the news point that you made, I remember at the beginning of lockdown, I was watching a lot of news. I was doing exactly what you just told me I shouldn't have done. So I wish I'd spoken to you earlier. I had the news on the telly all day. It was almost making me catastrophic in my thought. And, and since I stopped that and actually just watch the news because I think you've got to stay abreast of roughly yeah. what's going on but it was it was 20 30 minutes a day tops and then that was it I wasn't so I came off social media I wasn't all over it and you feel just generally your mood changes it's astonishing how just that one small change can make such a big difference and I think I think it's a really really important point you want to absorb as much information as possible because we are trying to make sense of something which is as new to you know world scientists and governments as it is to us and so that's as you say it's very important to to keep on top of information which is purposeful and useful for you in your everyday life and you and your family but it will become overwhelming because for every yin there's a yang for every body that says there's a vaccine around the corner there's someone that says there isn't for everyone that says we've got control of it some will say there isn't. And it's quite difficult to separate the science, the fact, from the opinion. Mm. And morning news, unfortunately, is a seamless blend of the two. Mm. That does feel quite overwhelming for a lot of people. Great. Well, um, thank you for that. We have just got a couple of questions that have come through. Um, so 
Firstly, what advice can you offer? So I'm reading them, so do apologise. What advice can you offer if I have a friend or family member that is struggling? How, how can you, this person that's come through on the private chat, how can they support them? Well, if you recognise that someone's struggling, I think the easiest way to, to approach it is to, to resonate with them, to say, to relate with them and say, okay, I, I see what you're going through because I'm going through it too, or I've been through it. So that's why you're aware of it and that it's okay sometimes all people need is just to have that conversation and however weird it is however odd their symptoms or their anxieties or their dreams people sleep i mean i think everybody's sleep patterns change during this so dreams are very vivid you're waking up later or not getting such good sleep some people are getting even better sleep so even when you don't admit there's something going on there is something changing in us so I think just reach out to somebody that sometimes that's all it needs in a, in a very easy and comfortable way. Don't make a big issue of it. Just say, it's almost just like checking in on people um, and encourage them to talk about it. Because I think the people that will have the most difficulties coming out of this are those that weren't able to say there was ever any concern in the first instance, because that actually, given all the factors, given health, given relationships, given finances, um, given fear. It's impossible for any of us to be completely immune to that. So yeah, don't, don't be in denial, I think mm. what I'd say. I think that's exactly why we um, formed Agents Together, was to give people a place maybe outside of what was the norm where they could find somebody to talk to like on our mentorship scheme or in our directory with it that we have on the website yeah, like that. you know as a psychologist i get it now you get it immediately when someone says something because it would be impossible i say to get through this without feeling that way so so i would be questioning someone who said they didn't feel that way yeah um <laughs> okay. Sitting around trying to find out which bit of you is not admitting to it rather than yeah, that would be my bigger concern. Um, and just another question, thanks, Joe. Um, I manage a team of young people who are now experiencing a lot of uncertainty about their career. How can I reassure them and keep them focused? I mean, it's a good question. Of course, young people are going to be fearful about their career. I mean, look. The estate agency industry in particular, perhaps for the younger people, they won't have come across this before, but it's gone through, when, <laughs> from my kind of age, I've seen the peaks and troughs of this. I've seen it battered by recession before, battered by economic um, difficulties. And it's always come back out there, and it's always come back out all guns blazing, and it recovers. So, I think, you know, to motivate people, there are, you know, the government was one of the, you know, as I said earlier, you know, it, it took buying and selling houses as a really essential ingredient of getting our economy back on our feet. You know, those virtual viewings, how weird they were. It, it prioritised that above and beyond a lot of other things. So I don't think it's a career that's going anywhere. It's certainly a career that's going to, it's going through its difficulties, but then so is every industry. But I mean, no, that it, it's, got to, it, it's, it's got to come good. It's come good many, many times before. Um, and I'd say persevere. Yeah, keep motivated with it. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. I think um, I always talk about, you know, using a bit of logic. And what you've just said is absolutely right there. Logically, yes, we have obviously all been through a global pandemic. But the housing market people still need to move home as long as the, co the population continues to grow one of the careers to be yeah bring the ladder rather than one of the more worrying ones but of course everybody is worried about their jobs everybody's worried oh. about their finances and it's certainly going to go through a fairly big change or uh in in the way that that people perhaps just buy and sell houses but nevertheless it's going to stay there it, you know it's an industry that's yeah solid fairly safe isn't it yes we have fluctuations but yeah. it's and as well as we're all going to stay where we are forevermore which I, if anything i think people will feel like they need a new start after this they'll feel like they want yeah. that chance that they have the freedom they haven't had in the last three months to even consider that so i my prediction i'm not a psychologist not a psychic is, <laughs> but 
you'll see more of an upturn suddenly from the 4th of July onwards and people thinking, yeah, you know, this is the moment to do what I haven't been able to do for many, many months. Absolutely. I know many agents who will be on here will, will be feeling that right now. Many of them are very, very busy. People, you know, thinking I want a garden now or I need that extra office or we need an extra bedroom. And, and, and it, it's a you know, lifestyle that can only be changed by moving home. Yeah. yeah, you've had a long time in your house, haven't you, to consider why it's not quite right. <laughs> all those Corona babies. Oh, we're yes. During lockdown, they all need a nursery. So <laughs> people are going to be upsizing. Just one final question. Um, somebody has asked, uh, as a manager, is there anything that I can do to motivate my staff weekly? So is there like a, have you got any tips for that? It's simply is, I don't know, say stay connected, but it sounds a bit pat, but I think make yourself relatable to them. Yeah. Because you would have suffered also from that lack of focus, that lack of motivation, those anxieties, those fears. So kind of become a bit less boss like in your in the way that you talk to them about staying motivated you know share actually advice on what keeps you motivated as if you're on a bit of a level playing field because sometimes people have ideas of what kept them going that it doesn't matter if you're you know the ceo or or the total junior you've just found ways of getting your kind of mojo back in terms of sort of being enthusiastic so share them they're not exclusive to any level and just be very relatable at this point and and support each other that's brilliant well thank you so so much joe i'm off to do some four seven eight is that right have i got it right yeah don't get it wrong. Well, it doesn't really matter if you get it the wrong way around to be honest it would have the same effect but four seven eight in so that. My four seven eight um Thank you all for joining us. Thank you so much to Jo Hemmings. jo has got a wonderful website. You can go and check her out um, if you wish. She's going to be joining us for three more of these sessions um, over the coming weeks, which we're absolutely delighted about. And if you have anything else um, as a group that you would like us to consider, please do just email us. Um, you can email me personally, sarah.edmondson at agentstogether.co.uk. I'll make sure I pop that in the, in the comments boxes. And also, please, if you feel like you need any help or support, please go to agentstogether.co.uk, visit the hub. In there, there is a wealth of information, some of our mentorship schemes, speedy mentorship. We're not alone in all of this. It's a very, very strange time, but we can get through this and we can be more positive. So um, thank you all for joining and thank you again, Joe, very much indeed for joining us.